Bob Deer Portugal Gang to the bime. So here we are at Gibraltar. Let's check it out. Tastes good, tastes good, tastes good, tastes good. Wicked. It's Portuguese good. All right, so there we go. In the background is the uh, the big rock, and later on we may see about even climbing up there. We'll have to see how we go. It's already starting to warm up a bit, and um, it's about 10 a.m. Spanish time. <laughs> it's only about 25 degrees so far, but we think it's going to get into the mid 30s. And yeah, it took us about 90 minutes to uh, drive here from our campsite near Cadiz, and we're going to go see what it's all about. So what we've done, uh, people have advised us uh, not to take our car over, but to park in the car park nearby. So that's what we've done. Looks like it's about 16 euros for a day to park here, which seems fair enough obviously i'd rather pay less but i kind of guessed it would have been more than that so pretty happy there but anyway before we get started i noticed that many of you who enjoy my content still haven't gotten around to subscribing it costs you nothing to subscribe but it really really helps me out so go ahead and smash that subscribe button go on smash it and if you don't that's ignorant all right let's get into it so the first thing we need to do is find out where the border is yeah, I think that guy uh, might have a problem with his exhaust. So looking for some clues about where the border is. And here we go. Gibraltar is that way. So we're going to go that way. We are going to go that way. Do we think we need to leave the car park first? Yeah, maybe. Noobs. So guys, this is going to be uh, quite interesting, uh, especially for my Portuguese peeps um, who are living in Portugal on residence permits. Because obviously we've passed into Spain and we all do it, but I suppose technically we should be going somewhere and getting a visa. I don't really know how it works. This is all still uncharted territory a bit in the EU now for Brits who sort of reside legally in the Eurozone. Um, so we should have no problem crossing to Gibraltar, we'll use our British passports and uh, but it'll be interesting when we come back into Spain will they stamp our passports, how will that work, we'll find out soon enough and then of course we've got the dog passports which uh, I've been assured is not a problem and uh, all their shots are up to date so hopefully the only problem we'll have with the dogs is going to be the monkeys up on the rock who apparently uh, like bothering the dogs but we'll find out in a minute i'm pretty sure i'm not going to be able to film as we go through customs so uh when we get through customs i'll meet you guys there and uh i'll tell you how it worked this looks like uh the customs place over here do see a lot of people appearing to drive over but we've been uh, assured that that is a bad idea apparently a lot of people cross in uh, either direction each day uh, for work so I'm hoping it's a fairly quick process we shall see Alright guys, so that was uh, super quick, took us about, what, two minutes? Two minutes to get through. Um, on the Spanish side, we showed our British passport and our Portuguese residence card. And they told us that because we all had residence cards, we didn't need any stamp in our passport. Although we did say that that's this border, he couldn't say that it's like that at all other EU borders. But anyway, that's how it is in Jib. Uh, British passport residence card straight through <laughs> he wasn't uh, I don't know if you heard that dong that was foot foot banging his head on a pole he's too busy looking at two pretty sheep dogs on the other side of the road but yeah so that was pretty straightforward and then on the British side um, they just wanted a quick look at our British passports but again not interested in the dog passports so that was uh, easy now I believe we've got a 14 minute walk into town. So this is very interesting as we uh, walk into Gibraltar we come across this other barrier and this barrier actually stops the road and uh, pedestrians because the runway uh, for the airport actually goes straight across the road. Kind of a unique setup. So yeah, 
Everybody has to stop and wait for that uh, little silver, look like a private jet, to take off. And now we can uh, cross over. Lots of people crossing over on uh, electric scooters. For my friends in uh, Hong Kong who watch my content, this is how it could be in Hong Kong if we were allowed to have electric scooters. Works very well here in Europe, it could work in Hong Kong but probably never will. See an easy jet plane over there? Yeah. And this is, the, uh, this is the runway. Straight through and over there. Amazing. So, a mat for one pound or one euro. We don't have any one pound coins, but I'm pretty sure that a euro is cheaper. There we go. A 3D, it's a superb 3D map and guide. Is it superb, Matthew? Good. Oh. Someone's been pulled over by the uh, Gibraltar police. Gibraltar? Is that what we call people from Gibraltar? So, interestingly, I don't know why, I, th I assumed everybody would be uh, in right-hand drive vehicles and driving on the right, but um, no. It's on the left, just like Spain. Well, I just heard the police officer speaking to the gentleman driving this car and he was speaking Spanish, so it's quite probable that the police here have to be bilingual and that would certainly make sense. But we've already noticed that most of the signage we see is just in English, so for example, city center and there's no spanish translation although that's uh, also like that on just on the spanish side there's no translation in fact something else we noticed we didn't actually see any signs on the road for Gib for gibraltar until we were you know right on it like within about 10 minutes from the place so uh, i'm not sure if that's political or just i'm overthinking it but it seemed a little bit odd Put and Bessie fancy a bit of chicken, and we're just below the uh, 1790 bomb proof battery. Look at that, the San Pedro battery. So, this was originally the only way into Gibraltar other than by the sea. Landport was rebuilt in 1727 after being the scene of bitter fighting in 13 sieges. All right. I wonder what time they used to shut the door. The first thing we see, Domino's Pizza, Gibraltar. Bloody hell, they're everywhere. July offer, 37 euros. Kids parties, six euros. Kids party six euro or six fifty per adult. Make it make sense. There we go. That's a little hack. Matthew's just come up with. Instead of buying the map, just take a photo of it there. Save yourself a euro. He's always thinking, Matthew. He's always thinking ways to save money. A genuine Gibraltar homeless person. journalism. Now people told us that there was a real British vibe and I have to admit all these uh, open air restaurants and a la carte dining is uh, kind of giving me anything but a British vibe but still it feels it feels cool. It feels cool. Right, there we go. There's some familiar Costa coffee and uh, English fish and chips. There we go. An old red telephone box and 
a red pillar box. Do not put drugs or narcotics into this post box. Matthew, don't put drugs or narcotics into that post box, okay? It's a rule. So yeah, it's interesting. I've been uh, trying to put my finger on what's different because people said to me, you really have a vibe like you're on a British high street. And I do get that. And my sons were saying to me, well, what brands are British? And of course, as you know, when you walk down a British high street, a lot of the brands are European anyway. So, you know, H&M is obviously uh, Swedish, uh, Mango is uh, Spanish and so on and so on. And, uh, but yeah, it is given that vibe of a British high street, but then it suddenly dawned on me, what's the difference? And um, it's that most of the shops are open. There's hardly any boarded up. Uh, there's hardly any boarded up shops. So of course, you go down a British High Street now, you're going to see in many towns even more than half of the uh, the shops on the High Street will be boarded up, won't there? Um, another thing, not seeing so many sort of. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to come across as snobby now, but I haven't seen any kind of chabs hanging around. I haven't seen uh, much evidence of sort of uh, drunk or homeless people. So it seems pretty tidy and, uh, if I could say, middle class. And then we can see Marks and Spencers in all its glory, just to sort of underline my point. But yeah. Business seems to be thriving here. I, I suspect that it's probably got a lot to do with uh, tourism as we we're crossing the border. There was a lot of uh, tourist groups. Let's have a quick look at how much it would cost to uh, buy property here. More than I can afford. Definitely more than I'd like to afford. Next. Traditional looking uh, barber shop. Right, so I'm just going to throw this out there, guys. And uh, for those of you who've been to Gibraltar, tell me what you think. So we've been here for about an hour now. We've walk down the high street and now we're walking to uh, the other side of Jib to, Jib to the waterfront and I have to say in retrospect I'd have brought my car through what do you think Matthew yeah, yeah. it's uh, much bigger than you think it's gonna be and to be honest with you I don't really see any evidence of any traffic congestion so I've got a feeling that that might be just one of those things people say you know don't bring your car you know what bring your car <laughs> plenty of places to park it's not very congested uh, yeah in retrospect I'd have brought the car over yeah I think if you're here for a few days maybe not so much of a problem but if you're here for a day and you're all on foot I mean I don't mind the walking obviously guys who follow my channel know uh, the walking itself doesn't bother me but it's uh, you're going to use a lot of time up just walking around from point to point uh, it's a fairly big place so yeah in my opinion bring your car over even better if you're on a motorbike uh, lots of people riding scooters here or another good option might be if you've got electric scooters um, but then again if you've got dogs like we have uh, that's not really going to work so yeah definitely consider bringing your car over you're not going to have any problems here and it is going to be useful despite what they say all right so here we are at 7th rosia battery and uh yeah this is about an hour an hour's walk from uh where we first come into gibraltar so yeah as i say definitely uh recommend if you can considering bringing your car over i think whoever uh <laughs> said this place is walkable it is walkable but let me put it this way guys um since uh the car park 
um, I can look at my me bandle I've already done over 10,000 steps just to get here and we're not all the way across Gibraltar yet so yeah of course it's walkable but I think definitely if you're an older person or you have kids with you um, definitely consider bringing your car guys and uh, the roads aren't very congested and there are plenty of places to park so don't worry about that and what I'm looking for now is in about uh, half an hour I have got a zoom lesson so uh, got pretty strong internet generally but if I can find a cafe I will uh, do that sit down have a coffee and uh, get these couple of zoom lessons done then we'll see about getting up that rock all right and here is uh, the beach over here and uh, we have swimming pools as well looks very very nice but for now we're going to go plonk our asses down at that uh, cafe over there yeah lots of these uh, tunnels on Gibraltar and um, apparently we got to look out for some very big burly men getting a bit thirsty actually Portugal gang I'm looking forward to a, uh, a Cola Zero maybe a cheeky ice cream we'll see how we go so this is interesting about convict labor being used here to build all of these amazing structures uh, Gibraltar served as a halfway penal station for convicts sentenced to penal servitude these convicts often spent up to seven years in Gibraltar before completing their terms of confinement in Australia and a majority of the convicts were Irishmen due largely to the vast amount of crime caused by famine conditions which afflicted the country during this time so there you go and there is part of the uh, town here in uh, Gibraltar that's called the Irish Quarter we may check that out later I'm not sure we've only got a day here I definitely think uh, that uh, now that I'm an experienced experienced Gibraltar traveler I would say you probably want at least two or three days here to see everything and I'm sure we'll come here again so many tunnels all around uh, Gibraltar and look at this one it looks like it's been roughly cut straight through the rock wow check it out what a nice guy right guys so here we are we're at the uh the most southern point of gibraltar well not quite it's just over there we'll have a walk there in a minute but just to show you what we can see from here so over here straight away we have a uh, you see the minaret of a big mosque just here beautiful mosque and up at the top there we can see uh, the rock of Gibraltar right up there I'm not sure we're actually gonna get there today we're actually thinking because we uh, our time is pretty limited and we're really enjoying ourselves here we think we're probably going to come back and uh, kind of do it in a little bit of a different way do it as like tourists and catch the uh, catch the cable car up and all that sort of thing so we might might leave that for today we'll see how we go for time and uh, yeah so up there you can see some of the many many tunnels that are through the uh, through the rock itself we've seen a lot of tunneling here and then over here beautiful lighthouse and then we can see all the way over there hopefully the camera can make it out and that is uh, Morocco just over there so there we are so presumably if I look this way this must be how does it work so this is the Mediterranean Ocean over here right and then that's the uh, Atlantic over there but what and I think I can see a ferry going over there so that'll be a ferry going from southern Spain over to uh, Morocco and that's something we plan to do at some point ah Tarifa yeah Tarifa is where we were originally going to go actually yeah and so you can catch a ferry from there we'll do that at some point so much to do such a big world let's go and see if we can get to the most southern point 
seems like when you're here you should do that. Actually this is uh, the University of Gibraltar just over here. So they're a highly educated bunch, these Gibraltans. Gibraltans. If anybody uh, knows what I should be calling these people who are from Gibraltar, please let me know. I don't want to offend them. Gibraltans, Gibraltarians, Gibbers. What do we call them? So yeah, the prices for the cable car are uh, uh, adults, which will be the three of us. 19 pounds each return, 38 pounds each return if we wanted to go to the nature preserve. Uh, and you can see the children would be uh, nine pound, 22 pound, um, respectively. Um, and I think you'd probably want to do the nature reserve as well. But the problem is again, uh, no dogs. So um, that's pretty much solved us. So for us, it would be a matter of walking up and it's really, really hot. And I honestly think, um, you know, it's something that we would be prepared to do, but I think you need a good few hours. So, you know, you need to be, to walk up, you're gonna need preparation. And uh, we just really don't have time for that. We're probably gonna get out of here. Maybe we're gonna go and have some food. I've got one more Zoom lesson at uh, five o'clock. Um, five o'clock Portugal time. <laughs> Um, so we will do that while we're here probably but yeah it looks like we're not going to get up the rock on this journey but I have to say we've thoroughly enjoyed our time here and uh, whether, whether or not we'll come back who knows we tend to prefer to go to uh, new places to be honest but um, it seems a shame not to have gotten up the rock what me and Christian were saying is that um, we think that if and when we do come here again it'll be with the either um, It'll be with the sole purpose of going up the rock. So we get here nice and early and start what's well, cool in the morning, have backpacks full of water and all that sort of thing. So anyway, it is what it is. And listen, guys, I know you're waiting for those drone shots. I got the drone out. And uh, of course, it said this is a uh, an authorization zone. So uh, unfortunately, I also, I also uh, can't can't fly the uh, drone here unfortunately so that's that really yeah anyway it is what it is so yeah apparent so yeah apparently these guys who've got mini buses uh, can get you up there and uh, they may or may not have been prepared to take the uh, dogs up as well but again they were saying 50 50 euros each to uh, to go up there and I kind of like it's difficult because you know you want the uh, full experience guys but I just I, I'm just too tight I'm just too tight to pay 50 euros to go to the top of the mountain you know so uh, maybe I'm wrong listen maybe if you've been to Gibraltar before and uh, you think it's worth 50 euros to get tugged up there I mean I'd just as soon think we would just walk up there <laughs> Let me know, am I being too tight? Am I being too tight? 50 euros per person just seems way too much for me. I mean, we've been to the top of much taller mountains, haven't we? We've uh, seen monkeys. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what we'd be getting for our 50 euros. So anyway, right anyway guys, so as I say, I've got one more lesson today. We're gonna have a wander uh, back into the old town and uh, find something to eat and then I will uh, do my final lesson of the day then I think we're going to leave so yeah aside from the uh, <laughs> not quite being able to get up on top of the uh, rock today um, we thoroughly enjoyed our day here in Gibraltar and it's a place thoroughly worth coming for a visit I would honestly say if you can you're probably better off having a couple of days maybe even three days here if you really want to see everything and as i say um, don't listen to the naysayers bring your car over <laughs> or rent a scooter or something like that because uh it's not really that walkable in my opinion and as you guys know i'm happy to walk a little let me have a look and see how many steps i've done right so i've already done over 20,000 steps just walking around here in Gibraltar so 
I guess by the time we leave, um, I'll have probably done over 30,000 steps. So, you know, over 20 kilometers walking and we haven't seen half of the island. So something to think about, guys. Uh, anyway, I think I'm going to wrap the video up here. <laughs> Uh, if you like this type of content and you're new around here, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps me out. And if you uh, like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Muito obrigado, amigos. Ciao.